Hi everybody, welcome to this week's topic, Referee Pathways and Competencies. We'll be talking about the pathways available in Victoria, beginning from a green shirt and progressing right up to your higher level officiating and what steps you need to take to reach each grading. Okay, so here's a bit of a flowchart that breaks down and gives us a good representation of the different levels of refereeing. So we start our journey on our apprentice or our green shirt level. This is obtained by sitting your level O school, which is roughly six hours. Um, and this includes a theory and a practical component. Once you've sat this, you pretty much just jump straight on court um, as this is the easiest way to learn by actually going out and doing it yourself, which can be daunting for some, but like everything, it does get easier. You're given a mentor at the start. Sometimes this can be multiple different people, um, but we aim to get everybody solo as soon as possible, which is optimally around the six to 10 week mark. Um, everyone is different in their learning and some pick it up faster than others. This is fine. Um, you're not forced to learn everything straight off the bat or everything about the game of basketball within the six weeks. But the aim is to try and get you um, independent running by yourself in your green shirt so you can start progressing that bit quicker. Once you've been deemed confident by a qualified referee coach, you're then evaluated on a game and deemed as a competent C grade referee, which will give you your striped black and white shirt. This also, um, you're also given a theory test to do. Sometimes this is a part of your level O school and sometimes it's done later once you've actually done your practical assessment. Um, they both mean the same things. The final requirement for being your C grade is to be a minimum of 14 years old. That's why in Ballarat we have this as our minimum age to sit the level O course, um, this along with other factors. Once you've held your C grade for a minimum of six months and you've been actively officiating during this time, you're then eligible to begin being looked at for your B grade. So this is the same process as your C grade in that you've got your practical assessment on court, um, but it's usually of a more senior game. And then you've also got your B grade theory test to complete satisfactorily. Um, this, there's also a component of off court and behind the scenes work that you've got to do to obtain your B grade. So in the Basketball Victoria accreditation policy, a referee must have fulfilled the obligations in relations to duties as required by the local association, including maintaining appointments, being punctual and displaying appropriate conduct and wearing correct uniform. So we're starting to see now that being graded is more than just being a good referee on court, but it's also about that obligation to your association off court and your professionalism and the commitment to your appointments. Once you've then held your B grade for um, an active minimum of 12 months, and given that you're 16 years of age or older, you can then start to go for your A grade. So this involves an extra step of actually sitting an A grade specific course. You must sit the A grade course um, and complete a theory test, which now has a pass mark of 80%. So notice that this is different to the previous theory tests as they were just a satisfactory completion, whereas this one now has your 80% mark. You must also complete a practical assessment by completing refereeing a match of a suitably challenged standard by a qualified referee coach. This is usually on the highest standard of game within the association, um, but it's not the highest grade, it's highest standard. Um, our flowchart has um, that you should complete three games, um, but we usually use this as a benchmark um, while we wait for the referee to see if they're ready to be progressed or not. So we may observe you on two games informally, but then we'll officially evaluate you on your third. We then move up to our uh, level one, which we start to get into our state level compared to our local. And this is our VJVL panel level, which we'll talk about panel versus non-panel later on. To gain this, you have, have to have again held your A grade for a minimum of 12 months. You also have to pass not only a theory exam, but a fitness test. So the fitness test is usually a yo-yo test or a beep test, and these components have to be updated every year. Um, so once, once we get into the higher levels, it becomes much more of a higher commitment for you to um, upkeep your skills and qualifications annually to maintain them. It also means that you must nominate for VJBL panel, which is by the association. So this ties back into our commitments that we spoke about earlier and being able to show your professionalism both on and off the court. Um, an association's obviously not going to nominate a referee who's unreliable, turns up every week in the wrong uniform and is rude to all of the staff and supervisors during the nights. Um, so yeah, so just making sure you're upkeeping your off-court and on-court professionalism 
um, is a big part of refereeing. Then we move into our level two and above. So um, feel free to pause the video now to read over the requirements, but this is moving into our high levels of big Vs, MBL one panels, our MBL, WMBL and FIBA sort of things. So feel free to pause just to read over those yourself if you wish. All right, so here we have the referee competencies breakdown, which we'll go through for an apprentice or a green shirt up to a level one. So these levels are all available on the Basketball Victoria website. However, we're only gonna go through up to a level one today. If you do decide to have a look at the document online, please just keep in mind that these were created in 2013. So some of the things may be slightly altered on the original, such as the names of the gradings. So you may see on here that a level one C, um, that's how they refer to the C grade because that's its old name. All of the content is, um, still the same and it's still all um, relevant it's just a few minor things like the names so as mentioned earlier referees can be um, aged between 12 to 14 years to go onto their green shirt however Ballarat does have the minimum age of 14 years as this is the minimum age to receiving your C grade um, these sheets are expectations of each level and what they should be able to do on each um, grading so the first slide is the competencies for your green shirt and your C grade these are pretty much the same because as soon as you're deemed to have a basic understanding, you can be looked for, you can be looked at for your stripes. Um, so we can see here, so personal qualities, being the appropriate age, wearing the correct uniform, um, and then our beginner school having sat that um, satisfactorily. So pretty much just being there um, and participating. Administration, demonstrate the basic signals and being able to communicate calls to the bench as per FIBA, mechanics or simplified and illustrated rule book. So this is just being able to start learning to signal to the bench um, and being able to make sure they can comprehend what call you're trying to make. Um, this is both through the hand signals, um, visuals and your voice and also being able to correctly add or sign off on a score sheet. So this could be the electronic version, which could be your tablet or iPad, or it could be on a paper form um, printed out. Fouls and violations. So making them a call on the majority of heavy contact situations. Um, so for now, we're only really expecting you to be able to call the ob big obvious calls. Um, calling majority of fouls in his or her area, calling all out of bounds accurately and calling all blatant travels and double dribbles. So basically at this level, we're just expecting you to be able to blow your whistle confidently and making that short, sharp, um, loud whistle noise um, rather than being closed in and really quiet and a soft call. Uh, mechanics, making correct basic positioning on the court in trail and lead by boxing in the play and knowing basic responsibilities for trail and lead positions. So when you start as your green shirt, you'll start to learn where to run on the court, where to move, where to stand, um, and when you're deemed to either be in trail or in lead. So just those basic things and knowing generally where to be and what, what to be looking out for. Um, and the boxing in principle, just being able to make sure that you've got all players in between you and the other referee. Rule knowledge, um, having a good basic knowledge of the rules of the game. So all of your obvious fouls and violations that we spoke about earlier um, and just starting to understand um, the basic rules and the basic knowledge behind all of the calls that you're making while you're refereeing. Okay, so we now move on to our B grade. So again, we've got correct uniform, which to reiterate would be our striped shirt, our black pants, um, so slacks or shorts, shoes, our runners, and our whistle, which should probably be a Fox 40. Um, we've got our shirt tucked in, all nice and professional. Having held our C grade for a minimum of six months, like we spoke about on our flow chart earlier, um, and then our administration showing clear and correct signals to the bench as per FIBA. Um, so just not hesitating as much as a beginner or a C grade probably would, just being able to fluently give our signals a little bit easier to the bench. Showing good communication to players, coaches and the bench when necessary and starting to use preventative voice, showing skills of being able to deal with conflict and controlling the game. So we're starting to show that we've got that rapport with players and being able to answer questions on rules and things with them and gaining the understanding that we're there more to facilitate the game rather than to overpower it, which is really important to remember as a referee as we're not out on court to make enemies. 
Um, we just need to remember that just to maintain that control. And good presentation. So again, shirt tucked in, neat uniform, and our appropriate body language is really important too. So not slooping over and looking bored, showing that we're positive and we're eager to be there. Fouls and violations, we have making the correct call on heavy contact situations. So the example is the block charge. We want to ask ourselves who established legal position, who initiated the contact, who was in the wrong, questions like that. Um, the biggest thing is getting a call on all heavy contact during a game to stop it from escalating to a point where you have completely lost control of the game, especially at the domestic level. Calling majority of fouls correctly in his or her area, in particular, show that they protect the shooter. Um, so again, we're just wanting to call majority of fouls, but we'd probably be a little bit more um, advanced than our C grade or our beginner. Um, calling all out of bounds correctly. So just taking note that this has changed from our C grade, which was calling accurately, and we're now calling correctly. Um, call the majority of travels, double dribbles, and other basic violations, um, the same as our C grade. Mechanics, we have um, make correct positioning on the court in trail and lead and show they understand the principles of finding the gap between offensive and defensive players. So um, finding the gap um, is a new one. So C grade, we only had the boxing in principle for worth. now we're starting to look at the gaps. Um, this is just starting to develop a deeper understanding and piecing together all of the concepts into one while we're refing. Um, being able to know where you should be moving or standing as the play and the ball moves. Um, show that they're starting to referee off ball, not ball watching, and that they start looking for contact on your off ball screens and your post plays. Um, so begin by watching you know, your basic post plays near the baseline in your areas. Even if they don't have the ball, we need to start keeping an eye on the contests off ball and our little you know, pushes and shoves and just trying to make sure that we're watching all players and not just a specific few on the court and showing that they're calling in their areas of responsibility. So again, making sure you're sticking to your areas as much as possible, rather than having both referees watching the ball, which may only have two players contesting, and that leaves the other eight players unsupervised. We need to make sure that we're trying to stick to our own areas as much as we can, so that we've got all 10 um, players on the court accounted for. Finally, our rule knowledge. So show a sound rule knowledge show us our knowledge, sorry, of the majority of the rules. So this should show and should be tied in with all of the points above. Um, referee coaches and staff do know if you know your rule knowledge and if it's good or not, based on where you move on the court, how you deal with conflict, and when a player comes to question a call, um, it is quite obvious um, just in those things alone, whether you do know um, and are keeping your skills up to date or not. Okay, so now we move into our um, A grades. This is similar to the B grade and also our flowchart earlier. So being your minimum 16 years of age at the time of the assessment, wearing correct uniform and holding your B grade for a minimum of 12 months. Administration, we've got show correct, cl clear and professional signals to the bench. So this is being able to go over to the bench, stop, deliver your signals confidently and easily, and then running off into position with no hesitation. Showing good communication skills, so again, your preventative voice dealing with conflict, um, but rather than just being able to deal with conflict once it arises now, we also want to be able to start to begin managing the game and trying to avoid the conflict to begin with. Um, again, showing court e excellent court presence and body language. In our A-grade schools, the same as we mentioned earlier, although the fitness test is not essential for this promotion, as it mentions, just like in the measurement section, it's recommended that the fitness test be done for your familiarisation purposes um, in the attempt to prepare you for future goals, such as when you do go for your level one. Fouls and violations, so um, calling on average 80% of fouls and violations in his or her area correctly, and the triple F principle and being able to call a block charge correct, correctly with applying this. So FFF, feet facing first. To establish a legal guarding position, the defensive player should be facing their opponent, have both feet on the floor initially, and have got to that position on the court first. Most referees should have heard of this, but if you haven't before, I strongly urge you to go to your rule book and just have a read up on a um, legal guarding position and being able to know 
who's in the wrong, whether it be an offensive or defensive player in a block charge situation. Being able to apply basic disadvantage and advantage where appropriate during a game. Now, this one should be done with caution, as in domestic games, we want to avoid this instead and call all contact um, as most games are at that amateur level. So they need to have everything called to keep the game in control. However, once you do go to your events and higher leagues, the principle should begin to be used for a bit more to allow a bit more flow in the game. If the contact's minimal or incidental or doesn't impede on the impede on the play overall, um, we should start to just let them go a little bit um, just for the sake of the game. Understanding and where necessary, calling advanced violations such as goaltending and your shot clock. So knowing when the goaltending rule applies, knowing when to reset your 24 seconds or your 14 second reset on your shot clock um, are important. Showing leadership skills, um, being able to control any domestic game with any partner. So as referees begin to progress, they're seen more and more as experienced or senior officials, and they tend to be paired with beginners. So when you're paired with a beginner, you are expected to not only mentor and assist the junior, but be able to control the game at the same time and take ownership of it. So it is a big ask, but by this level, you should be able to start being able to multitask both things. Mechanics, um, showing desired positions on court, both in trail and lead and good mo movement to see the gaps between the players. By this level, movement should be excellent and moving with a purpose. So we don't want to be walking around aimlessly while we're refereeing. By the time we get to our A grade, we should be able to explain why we're moving to the positions that we are. No ball watching by our A grade, we should be focused on our own area and watching our off ball plays. And this ties into knowing and calling in your own area of responsibilities. Extend and show correct use of advanced mechanics, including movement into area five and six in lead. So this is penetrating and taking the step across towards the key when we're in lead to maintain that 45 degree angle, specifically on those post plays. <coughs> Um, movement across to cover plays in area three and trail. So this is moving across towards your split line to again maintain that 45 degree angle and be able to see the gap between the offense and the defense. And finally, our buttonhole mechanics. So this is when we're almost hanging back if we can't beat a fast break in lead so that we can see that clear end of the play rather than trying to beat it and being level and not having that 45 degree angle. Finally, we have our rule knowledge and this is in the the theory test and needing an 80% pass mark. Most exams allow a second opportunity to pass if you do fail the first time. However, you should always be aiming to keep your rule knowledge up to date so that you can pass that first time. Okay, so lastly, we move on to our level one competencies. Similar to our other levels, we need to have held our A grade for a minimum of 12 months, wear correct uniform, but we also need to be deemed fit enough by the association to complete a fitness test and show commitment of duties. And also being consistent, officiating those tougher, higher grades now as well. Signals to the bench the same, um, nice and clear and concise. As mentioned earlier, the level one referee should be able to manage and prevent unnecessary and excessive contact during a game, justify their call selection, and meaning that should mean that the calls should be in the context of the game and calling what's right for the game or what's fitting for the game. Consistency on calls at an average of 80% on fouls and violations. The block charge, um, also displaying consistency and understanding the application of verticality and refereeing the defense. So when we're refereeing, primarily watching the defense, as most of the time they are the main reason for the contact. So we find watching them, if they're in a legal guarding position, but we do see the offensive player extend their arm, for example, then we know there's going to be an offensive foul. Um, also applying verticality in terms of staying within a defensive cylinder in situations such as rebounding, where we're watching for players to jump over the opposition's back. Um, interpreting and applying advantage, disadvantage to incidental contacts to allow for more game flow, understanding and calling our more advanced violations um, and the ability, showing the ability to pick up tempo changes during a game. <clears throat> so this is being able to pick up when the teams have increased their intensity or where we may have the lulls or the slow points during a game. So it's important as a referee, as the game is constantly changing, we need to be ready to also adapt quickly to this um, with our different plays and situations and be able to pick up or slow down our own tempo as well and what calls we're making. 
Our mechanics, including positioning, trail in lead, good movement, anticipating anticipating play to ensure to ensure we're two steps ahead of the player and we're in the best possible spot to see the plays and the players being run. Um, watching our areas of responsibility and not ball watching at all by this point. Um, extend and show correct use of advanced mechanics similar to our A grade. Um, and we finish off with holding excellent rule knowledge and showing that we would be competent to pass a junior panel exam. All right, last slide. So this poster is a great little flow chart by Basketball Vic Country um, that outlines the steps that you can take to move up the ranks. So um, as we discussed, you move from your green shirt, then to C grade, B grade, A grade, level one, two, three, but I'll mainly focus on our domestic level grades. So on the right, you can see the events which BVC recommend for each level of referee. BVC events are highly recommended um, as these are usually a good competition basis. They're a bit higher um, than your um, normal domestic levels. And they've also got referee coaches that evaluate and provide feedback um, a lot more frequently than what you would probably find at your local association. Um, country championships are conducted yearly for the under 12s, 14s, 16 and 18 age groups. BBC affiliated associations and country Victoria athletes are accepted in um, what is the principle of a town versus town competition in Country Vic. So events are held over multiple days in a round robin and a knockout setting. For those starting off, any of the country or club champs are a good starting point. So these include, um, as you can see on the right, the under 12 future stars, your under 14 gold stars, and under 16, 18 club champs. Now with these, fresh referees would start at the bottom of your Div 3, 4 games, and then they'd work their way up. <coughs> We then move on to the B grade and above referees. So SCC, that stands for the Southern Cross Challenge. And this is a part of the development pathway for players, coaches, and referees. Um, it brings together the best of the under 14 and under 15 players in the country for the first taste of an interstate level competition, similar to referees getting their first taste as well. Um, so there's teams from right across Australia, and it's a great level competition for selected referees picked for the event to enhance their refereeing and learn about the tournament experience at that higher level, rather than just your country or club championships. ACJBC is the Australian Country Junior Basketball Cup, and the teams will travel from across Australia and New Zealand for the champs, which cater for children in under 14s, under 16s and under 18s age groups, with the main focus again being on development of not only the players and coaches, but the officials as well. So this event generally also sees a scholarship given to a referee to further their development. Um, so this is quite a big one. Once a referee gets their A grade, they are beginning to progress into a regular high level competition, such as your VJBL or Senior League CBL. So CBL is the Country Basketball League, and it's an open home and away domestic representative league held at different conferences in regional Victoria from around October to February. So it's generally a round robin um, weekly competition, mainly played on the weekends. VJBL is the Victorian Junior Basketball League and is played every Friday night um, for a majority of the year across associations throughout Melbourne as well as regional Vic. This competition has representative teams across all age groups, right through from under 12s up to under 20s, who also play in a round robin format every week. There are many different divisions, um, but for referees, we split it into two. So like we've probably been talking about earlier, our panel referees, that's our level one and above, um, and they referee the Victoria Championships Division and the Reserve Division. All of the other divisions under that are classed as non-panel and they can be refereed by any referee who's deemed competent. So usually a high level B grade or A grade. Once you reach your, re once you reach your level one, you're then eligible for events such as the Australian Junior Championships and other seasonal competitions such as your big V leagues. And this can then of course go on to NBL one and higher. So I hope out of all of this, you've got a really good understanding now of what it takes to progress and develop as a referee. Um, everybody's got different goals and ambitions. You can just stay at your local A grade um, and you can just continue to ref domestic games at your local association. Or if you do want to aim that bit higher, then you can see what steps it takes and where you should be looking to head towards um, so that you can get up into your level one, twos and threes. Hope this helps. Thanks, guys.